map-based solutions, changing views to get a better perspective. Mapcast, imagery on demand. In this video, you will learn how to connect to Mapcast, display aerial imagery and elevation contours, analyze your own mapping data in context, and explore year-over-year -year changes in land use patterns. Here's how it works. Mapcast is a web map service, or WMS for short. Zoom to any location in your mapping software of choice, turn Mapcast on, and instantly see high-resolution aerial imagery and one-meter elevation contours from First Base Solutions to satisfy your need for site-specific details without the hassle and expense of visiting a remote location. If your mapping projects routinely require you to spend time hunting for reliable geographic data for multiple locations and the upfront costs to acquire that data, even if you're just at the proposal stage and those costs may never be recoverable, then you should give Mapcast a try. Mapcast is a must-have mapping tool for anyone who works in land development, engineering, agriculture co-ops, natural resources management, land use planning, or anyone who designs or manages large-scale projects or extensive networks of properties such as energy distribution infrastructure. You will save time and money on your preliminary site research without the commitment of purchasing data outright in advance. Mapcast allows your team to access the entire collection of FBS imagery and contours through the desktop CAD or GIS software you already use. Simply add data to your map project and choose a connection to Mapcast instead of data stored locally. Share the connection URL with your team members and check your dashboard to monitor usage. Mapcast is the most efficient and cost-effective way for teams to access large data sets without the need to store, manage, or process large files that can slow down your internal networks. Email alerts and custom reports let you track your team's usage. Bandwidth sharing lets each person on your team use the service as much or as little as they need. The bandwidth top-ups are automatic, so you'll never run out. Let's learn how to use Mapcast in four easy steps. Lesson 1. Connect. To start your subscription, contact Customer Service and we'll establish a user account for your company based on the bandwidth you expect to use in an average month. Typical commercial users consume about 500 megabytes per team member per month. That breaks down to about 260 images served whenever you pan, zoom, or refresh. Each image is delivered in 256 kilobyte tiles. The number of tiles per image will vary based on the size of your monitor and the size of the map window in your software. In months where your team's combined bandwidth usage is above the monthly limit, you'll be topped up automatically so you'll never run out in the middle of an important project. Once your user account is set up, Navigate to fbswms.firstbasesolutions.com and enter your username and password. The first time you log in, you'll be asked to review and accept the End User License Agreement. When you're ready, click OK to move on to the dashboard. Copy the URL you find at the top of the page. This is your unique link that you can share with any team members who will be using your account. Next, open your favorite WMS compliant software. Consult the help files for your specific software to locate the WMS options since the steps may be different from my examples. Under the help menu, you will also find FAQs, code samples if you're connecting through a tile map service, and a list of the available data layers. If you're connecting through Google Earth, navigate to the KML files and download the file for your area of interest. Open the file and it will load in position on the Google Earth globe. The quality of the Mapcast aerial imagery will be immediately obvious when compared to the Google Satellite base layer. MicroStation users can similarly download a file for their area of interest. Be sure to first choose the projection you'd like from the drop-down menu at the top of the page. For the rest of the tutorial, I'll use ArcMap. Add data to your new project and navigate to your Add WMS option. When prompted to add a URL, paste the URL that you copied from your Mapcast dashboard. Choose version 1.1.1 in most cases and load the available layers. Now that your unique URL is set up, add the FBSWMS to your list of WMS sources. Then add it as the first data layer in your project. 
Click to turn the layer visibility on and you'll see part of the imagery draw on your screen. The hard part is over. You've now completed the Connect portion of the tutorial. Lesson 2. Display. In my ArcMap example, I'll add in a World Countries layer to give some context to the MapCast imagery. Expand the MapCast layer and you'll see the imagery that's available arranged in a hierarchy of three levels, grouped geographically by province, then by county, then by year, if the county has multiple imagery sets available. Check all the imagery sets that you'd like to be visible, and don't forget to also turn on the county and province groups the imagery is grouped under. Contour elevations can be found at the top of the list for Ontario. Initially, the map is displayed with a plain old geographic projection, but since I'm going to be working in the Toronto area, I'm going to change the coordinate system for the MapCast imagery to NAD83 UTM Zone 17N, which is the most common projection for working in South Central Ontario. You can see the effect this has on the shape of Western Canada since the map is now focused on Ontario. Open the properties for all layers and you'll see the coordinate system change has been applied there as well. Zoom in on Ontario and you'll see the shape of the region looks familiar and undistorted using this projection. The properties dialog shows the same types of properties you'd see in any other type of layer. Here you can rename the layer and set the scale range. The data source is the URL you copied and pasted earlier. To streamline the tree structure in the table of contents, you can choose only the layers you're actively working with under the Layers tab. Only the layers listed on the right will be available until you change the setting. This is a good practice to help save bandwidth since you'll be temporarily unable to draw layers outside your area of interest. The visibility, zoom, and pan options work the same as with any other layer. Here, I'm only interested in peel region, so I'll turn other layers off to save bandwidth. Another way to save bandwidth is to use image caching. The cached image will be temporarily saved, so it doesn't need to be reloaded until you zoom, pan, or make a new image layer visible. This feature will increase the speed and performance if your work tends to keep you in the same area of the map for a long time. You've now completed the display portion of the tutorial. Lesson 3. Analyze. There are two types of contours available for Ontario. FBS, which is from First Base Solutions in 1 meter intervals, and OBM, which is from the Ministry of Natural Resources Ontario base maps in 5 meter and 10 meter intervals. Since the FBS contours are so detailed, they will only draw when you're zoomed in closer than 37,500 by default. In the table of contents, the visibility is checked on but grayed out until I zoom in close enough. Zooming in even closer allows you to interpret topography at the neighborhood level. For instance, following the points in this V-shaped pattern, I can identify the bottom of a valley where there is likely to be a small stream with the Vs pointing uphill away from this pond. In addition to analyzing topography, you can take advantage of many of the tools built into your CAD or GIS software. Let's take a really close look at the imagery. Most of our imagery is between 10 and 20 centimeter resolution, meaning each pixel covers 10 by 10 or 20 by 20 centimeters on the ground. Because the imagery is ortho-rectified, meaning it's been geometrically corrected for the movement of the aircraft, it can be used to accurately measure area of features on the ground and distance and direction between objects seen in the photo, just like a map. At this zoom level, it's easy to see rooftop objects, road markings, and even individual people. Since we're using a UTM projection, we can measure in square meters with ArcMap's measure tools and find the area of this minivan. I've gone to MapCast's sister service, Map Warehouse, to purchase and download some parcel mapping data which I've added to my mapping project. As you can see, the property boundaries line up perfectly with the MapCast imagery. Without the imagery below to show the location of structures and the types of land use, the parcels don't have much meaning on their own. I've also used the imagery as a base layer to create my own highly detailed vector base map by tracing objects on the ground. Details of the busy urban environment are much faster and easier to survey from the imagery than by undertaking a ground level study of the area. 
You've now completed the Analyze portion of the tutorial. Lesson 4. Explore. MapCast lets you explore past conditions at your site with historical imagery. I'll zoom into an area near the airport where I know there's been some development. For this area, I've already loaded the imagery for Mississauga 2008 and 2014 and Peel Region 2015 which contains Mississauga. By switching the visibility of the 2008 and 2014 imagery off and on, I can see the new UP Express tracks leading into the terminal. The 2015 imagery shows even more changes to the parking lots and roads surrounding the UP Express project. Now look back at 2008 and see what the area looked like under construction. Using landmarks you see in the historical imagery that existed in the past is an easy way to position your historical vector mapping data. Updating portions of your legacy files can be done by digitizing over the changes you see in the image. Here you can see changes to the woodlot where the 407 extension was built. Most areas in Ontario have multiple image sets listed by year as you can see in the tree structure. The data ranges in age from 2002 up to the current or previous calendar year, but not all areas are updated every year. As with most mapping software, the data draws in the order you see listed in the table of contents, starting from the bottom and working up. When working with two imagery layers from different years that cover the same geographical area, the topmost visible layer in the drawing order is the only one that you'll see because the imagery is opaque. All layers below, even though set as visible, will be covered until the top drawing layer is turned off. You can adjust the drawing order of the layers under the Layers Properties by using the up and down arrows on the right. Keeping the layers in chronological order will be helpful to managing the data in your project more intuitively. All imagery is taken in early spring unless otherwise noted as fall imagery. This is done so ground features will always be visible without being obscured by foliage. In situations where you want to simultaneously view two images at once, the transparency can be adjusted. Transparency must be applied to the entire MapCast layer, but not for or between individual layers. If you need to see two layers at the same time, duplicate your MapCast connection in the table of contents and adjust the transparency properties separately. This is a helpful workflow if you need to assess major land use changes, where before and after images may be so different there are no landmarks left on the ground to orient what you're seeing. If you need to research historical conditions to support a legal action, to assess property values or changes to the environment, for example, MapCast imagery provides objective, date stamp documentation of past conditions that make it easy to visualize changes to the landscape over time and communicate the information with others. Here I'm creating a simple layout to share with a coworker, noting the new swimming pool on this property. Changes requiring permits such as this are simple to see in the imagery but would be difficult to assess from the road. The imagery also makes it easy to confirm bylaw compliance such as proper fencing and setbacks from property lines using the measurement tools we looked at earlier. If you need imagery updated for a specific location, you can contact First Base Solutions about a quote for custom aerial imagery acquisition services, topographic mapping, or any type of custom map compilation. You've now completed the Explore portion of the tutorial. For more information and to subscribe to MapCast, please visit firstbasesolutions.com.